there was some time back where I took my wife to Hawaii for three weeks. It was her 50th birthday, and uh, so we were on the island of Maui for the second week of that three-week uh, vacation. And uh, we were into snorkeling big time at that time of our life, and we were looking for a place to snorkel, and come to find out we were staying in a place out on the west part of Maui. And uh, they're in the Hawaiian Islands. And so we were told we could go out to this coastline area and there might be some fish uh, along the shore, but it was a little windy and they're choppy out there and the water was a little, eh, it wasn't as clear as it normally would be. And so we snorkeled along the, the sh you know, the sandy shore area out a ways and we were seeing hardly any fish, not very little fish. And we swam and swam and it's like, finally we stopped, went into shore, got talking to a local person or so and they said, well, you go up to the rock cliff over there, out in front of that rock cliff, there normally is uh, a lot of fish out there. It's a little deeper, it's down about 20 feet to the bottom, but uh, there are fish out there and once in a while you see a sea turtle or something, so, you know, if you want to risk that, um, you should have a life jacket on, you know, you guys don't have life jackets. I don't think I would recommend anybody go out there, uh, even if it was calm water, but it's up to you. Well, I was stupid. I want to go see some fish. Poor Kathleen, well, she did too, and she was trusting me to make wise decisions. And so we got out there in front of this big old rock cliff. This rock cliff was all coral, and it went up probably about, hmm, 18, 20 feet in the air, pretty rugged. Yeah, you know, you couldn't climb up it. It was just dropped off right into the ocean area. And uh, so we're out there snorkeling. We're seeing a few fish and the wind starts picking up and it's not comfortable. I'm getting a little bit of that ocean water in my snorkel. Well, I'm a proficient swimmer. I was at that time and she's not. And so, so I thought I better go get her. She was out further oh, 15, 20 feet away from me, out a little deeper, enjoying, looking down at what she could see. And I'm gonna swim out there to tell her, let's let's swim around the the, black, the cliff and let's, let's, let's call this a day. Water's getting too rough. Wind's picking up. Well, about that time, I noticed in trying to swim to her, I can't, I can't move. I, I can't go anywhere. And I'm kicking hard with my fins and I'm not going anywhere. And all of a sudden, I start moving backwards toward this cliff. And I, what is going on? And so I turn around and I see a big whirlpool out about 25, 30 feet, roughly, maybe a little further from this cliff in front of me. And I'm being sucked into this whirlpool out here in 20, 25 feet of water. And it's pulling me in, and I, oh my gosh, panic comes over me. I, Jesus, help us, help me. So I turn around and start swimming again out of that, trying to, toward Kathleen to tell her, stay away. And I'm yelling at her, yelling at her, go the other way, the other way. Well, she doesn't know what in the world's going on. She doesn't have a clue. I'm being sucked into this huge whirlpool. I'm kicking like crazy. And I'm not making any progress to speak of at first. Then slowly I gain an inch, two or three inches, but I'm getting weak, exhausted, because I'm just running out of energy. And I'm praying, oh Jesus, help, help, help. That's, that's life and death. Well, I see her taking water in the, the, her snorkel tube and she's coughing and hacking and, oh man, help Lord, help. <laughs> I'm praying, you know, inside help, and I'm swimming like crazy to try to get to China, which is west of where we were. And fortunately then, I was able to get outside of that vortex pulling me in, was able to swim out to her. And I said, Kathleen, we got serious. I'll tell you about it later, but we got to get into shore immediately. So I grabbed her hand, pulled her in. Well, the, the waves were kicking up so high, she had water down her 
chest area. She's coughing and spitting, half drowning. And me, I'm as weak as weak could be. I'm just a dish rag because I had used all of my energy trying to get out of that whirlpool that was happening. Uh, we swam around that whirlpool, by the way, to get in to a safer spot. Well, we get down to the base of those rocks, you couldn't hold on. There was no place to hold on to. And we didn't have the strength to swim uh, around that cliff area to get to the sandy shore. Well, by the blessing and favor of God, there were two 15, 16 year old boys that come out there to fish. So they were up there on top of the cliff and we could hear somebody up there and I start yelling and they, you know, look over and, hey, what's going on? I said, hey, we can't swim. We, we're here. We can't climb up. We can't move. Could you help us? Well, we got a rope in the car. We'll back. So they got a rope and come over and dangle that rope down. Long, it was long enough, thank God, to where Kathleen could get a hold of it. And, well, we're going to drag her around the cliff and over to the shore, and then we'll come back and get you. Okay. So that's what they did. And, oh, man. Waves are kicking up higher, the winds are blowing the waves, and I'm getting banged against that coral wall of rock. Finally, they came, and I was so thankful to be <laughs> to be rescued and get a hold of that rope. And they took me around, and uh, I think I laid there for a half hour, 45 minutes, just trying to get some energy and breath there in the sand, um, sandy beach. And uh, wow. These kids said, don't you guys, where are you from, America? Uh, don't you know you never go out to the ocean without life jackets on? And even when weather like this, you don't go out in life jackets. Well, yeah, I should have known that, but we're good swimmers. Well, don't ever do that again. Yes, sir, we won't. Guaranteed to that. So God protected us at that time. That could have been very serious. And God did protect me, protect Kathleen, and I just want to thank him for uh, doing that. He kept us alive so that we could still be of some use down through the years until this present moment. So with that, we'll just uh, move along.